Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to the June 30th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it early. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, that would be a wonderful thing. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 155, S&P's off 14, NASDAQ 72, Russell's down three, semis off one, Trendy's down 35. So the big loser, percentage wise, is the NASDAQ 100. It's off 72 points. Gold's off $7.50, trading out 18.10. It closed below 18.13. We'll suggest lower price. Silver's trading out at 20.35. That's off 38 pennies. Lights recruit down three bucks and change. 106.66 of the print there. Natural gas off 79 cents, trading out at 570. And the 30 year treasury is up one and a half points, trading out at 138.15. So let's begin by taking a look at the index ETFs out here. Just try to get a gauge of what has taken place so far. What's taken place is two of the four. That means the Qs and the IWM have tested their swing points. In the case of the Qs, it was the uh, yeah, it was the top of the swing point from the trading session of June the 16th. Now that has volume of 81 million shares. We're at 46 million shares right now. In essence, we've been trading for three and a half hours. If we did straight line math. Meaning we took uh, 80, well, 46 million shares divided by three and a half times six and a half, just a straight line equation out there, we'd get about 83, 84 million shares or thereabouts. So we may be pushing to that swing point with lighter volume. Now, it's very possible that we're going to see volume curtail, and maybe you're going to get, if it's less than 81 million shares at day's end, and price close above 276.06, you'll have a test rejection of a swing point on the queues, you will have a test and rejection of support, meaning the bottom of its profile, and that's gonna suggest if you can't bust them the downside price, we'll try to bust them to the upside. Where's the upside? 296.75, the top of the daily profile. If we take a look at the IWM, that one's much more clear. 14 million shares so far. If we do the straight line math on it, no way it gets to 43 million shares. And as long as price in the IWM remains above 168.42, you'll have a test and rejection of a key swing point on lighter volume. You can't bust them down, price will try to bust them up. Now, where is that? Well, the interesting thing here, really in all cases, this could be today, could be the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. But the bust them up level inside the IWM that we'd first have to go to is a swing point from just a few days ago, June the 28th. And so its target to the upside is 178.15. You get above that, that's what, and you move into that with more than 25 million shares, then you'd have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, in the case of both the spies and the diamonds, those are the charts on the left-hand side, they never got down to their swing points doesn't mean they can't what they did get down to was support and that was the bottom of its daily profile and for these spies that's at 375.19 as long as that holds 
conditions remain bullish. Bullish because in the daily time frame, there is a buy the D point pattern. If we take a look at the Dow Diamonds, also a buy the D point pattern, price tested support. That's the bottom of its profile. Now, both the bottom and center for the Dow, for the Diamonds, are at the same price level, 30501. That is a strong level of support. So, how do we uh, summarize what's taking place inside the index ETFs? You've got tests and rejections of key support levels. Two of them are testing swing points. The Qs, I can't tell just yet at 111 whether we're going to have more than 82 million shares or not. But if we don't, and price remains above 276.06, it can bust them down. It'll be on lighter volume. We should see the rally begin, continue tomorrow, likely on Tuesday and Wednesday as well. If we take a look at the S&P 500, we dive down into the sectors. What we're going to see here, if we're just looking for tests of swing points versus just the bottom of a profile, what we have out here is the XLK, so the number one weighted sector inside the S&P 500. It has tested its swing point, which has volume of 16 million shares. You are not going to have anywhere near that volume come day's end. As long as price closes above 125.57, you will have a rejection of that key swing point. That suggests to move up into the 134 area. If we take a look at the XLF, the financial sector, it too tested its swing point. That swing had a volume of 100 plus million shares. You're at 32 million shares. I don't care how you do the math. There's no way we're going to generate more than 100 million shares. Now, that doesn't mean it can't possibly happen. Something would have to get uh, really crazy. Not that we can't get really crazy, but at 112 in the afternoon, Stevie doesn't see crazy out here. What Stevie sees is a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. Back to that, you can't bust them down. Time to try to bust them up. In the case of the XLY, it's testing the top of its swing point. That swing point had volume of 12 million shares. You're only at 3.7. If price closed above 137.72, you're 137.94 right now. Another test and rejection. The communication sector has tested the top of its swing point. That's at 54.17. The volume there was 6.9. You're only done 2 million shares. Again, a rejection of a key swing point. The industrial sector testing its swing point that had volume of 14 million shares. You're only at 3.9. Another test and rejection on lighter volume. Um, the uh, XLB. The material sector has tested the swing point low. That was at 72.77. We're trading at 73.72. The test is going to be on much lighter volume. That volume was 9.5 million shares. We're at 3.2 as of 1.13 in the afternoon. Those are the ones that have tested swing points. The ones that haven't tested swing points, such as the healthcare sector, the XLV, that's trading above the top of its daily profile. It remains bullish. The XLP above the top of its profile. It remains bullish. The real estate sector trading above the top of its profile, daily profile, that is bullish. The utility sector above the top of its daily profile, that is bullish. So what is that saying to you and I about the S&P 500, or certainly at least the sectors with inside there? Could bust out the lows, time to go try to bust out the highs. Now, if it's going to do that, what it's going to need is positive market breath. So let's look at market breath for the S&P 500. Let's look at it for the NASDAQ. Let's focus right now on the S&P 500. Now, this is the 30-minute time frame. And just as, uh, just as of about a minute ago, two minutes ago, we've gotten a bearish crossover. What that means is we have 185 instruments for the 30-minute time frame that are trading below the bottom of the profile, 109 that are trading above the top of the profile. So what we should see, and we'll take a look at that 30-minute file when we get back, 30-minute chart, is we should see a continued pullback. The question is, a pullback to where? And that's what we'll cover for you. And then we'll take a look at the 60, the 240, daily time frames as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's down 32, 234. S&P's off 25. NASDAQ 100 down 112. So we got the ES Mini, the 30-minute time frame chart. That's where we're starting. The reason we're starting is because we took a look at the uh, TAS market breadth for the 30-minute uh, profiles out there, and they had uh, just recently crossed over to a bearish direction. We can see on the 30-minute chart that price got up to its CD9 breakdown level of 38.12. No other real topping signal. This suggests, and price is trading above the top of its 30-minute profile. Let me just make sure of that i think uh, yeah so the bottom 37.69 is both the uh, center and the bottom of the profile so that's your strong support level so the es mini should pull back and test 37.8850 that's the top of its profile or it's also under change line currently printed about 37.79 the bottom of that profile as i mentioned was 37.69 if that level fails that's going to suggest a retest of the lows out there but probably should get back in test one of those support levels that's on the 30 minute time frame Let's go take a look at the, let me pull this all the way over now to the screen, so I don't have to change screens here for you. And let's go take a look at what's going on with regard to the other TAS market profile, market breadth dials, a speedometer out here. So you've got the 60 that's actually in bullish configuration. So let's take a look at it and come back to its chart. So on a 60 minute time frame, we have 242 instruments trading above the top of their profile, only 130 below. So this is suggesting that what the 30-minute chart is telling us is just simply expect and anticipate a retracement, and just a retracement. Now that's going to go ahead and bust out those lows out there, at least that's how I'm reading it at this stage. So if we take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart, let's go see what we see out here. So on a 60-minute time frame, what price was able to do is get up towards its TD9 count breakdown level of 38.25. That's a price that if we see price close above it, got to love that language, a price that if price closes above it, hey, yeah, sure, okay. But if price does close above 38.25, that's going to suggest that we've got a change in trend on a 60-minute time frame for the ES Mini, which price should then go target the 39.41 level out there. Now, support inside of the ES Mini, the ideal buy area on a pullback would be at about 37.73 to 37.73, 37 37.75 or so. Why? That is the uh, that is the 
So this was a bearish structured profile. I'm going to try to open this up just a tad more. Maybe, there you go. It might be easier to see. So this is a bearish structured profile. We talked about the bullish structured profile. This is a bearish structured profile. In other words, there's more sellers near the 37.73 and 37.82 level, but price closed above it at noon. Price closed above it at one. At two consecutive bars above that. The ideal counter trend move. That would mean, in this case here, to the downside, would get down to that 37.73. I'm not saying that's where price is going to get down to. I'm saying that would be the ideal buy area at that 37.73 level. Uh, ideal buy area so long as it holds. If it closes below that, then we're looking at a move to 37.45. So that's the 60-minute time frame. Let me see if we can pull that back up. Uh, there we go. Does that do that? There we go. So now that's the 60. Let's go take a look at the 200. So the 240-minute chart still has a bearish crossover. And what we mean is there's only 89 instruments trading above the top, 244 trading below. Let's go look at the four-hour time frame. Well, Stevie, if we were going to look at the four-hour time frame, it would be good if you actually had that time frame available. Well, I do have it available. We just have to switch up panels here. Give me a moment, and we'll do that. We want to see what the 240 is communicating to us. So what the 240 has communicated to us is price this morning, the pullback pulled all the way back. So this formed a TD9 count top. It formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top out there. And what has price done? Price pulled back and tested and rejected its breakout level. Now that's a 374575. I just want to point this out to everybody that is out there. And there are amazing individuals with inside our Tiger's Den with inside the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, contributors uh, that do the uh, shows for you. And I guarantee you, there's not a single one of us out there that would have chosen 374575 as a breakout level. Folks, that is the power. That is the objective power of the TD9 count pattern. I really urge you to learn that pattern, to apply that to your charts out there. If you're not familiar with it and you think I'm talking a foreign language, let me clear up that foreign language because I can teach you how to speak the TD9s in about an hour's time. And that's an easy thing to do. There's a workshop on uh, that all uh, all uh, members of uh, so, uh, Mastering Probability have access to. And you can become a member. It's pretty easy. And you got the Tiger Dollar promotion that is out there. So there's no reason to not learn this uh, tool out here. Now, what Price has also done, this is the bearish side of it. And that uh, makes sense with regard to the bearish crossover that still exists inside the 240-minute chart. A counter trend move here would get us right up to that oscillator and change line because it had recently changed colors. And so far, what we have is a rejection. Now, this is a two-hour time frame chart, and the bar is not over. It does not complete for another 37 minutes. That's right. 2 p.m. is when this bar will complete. What happens if, bar, if the price closes above the 38.16 level? Well, then that's going to suggest to move to 38.45 or 38.60. What happens if it closes below 38.16? Well, then we're kind of in neutral-ish type territory because we have a key level of support that held and we have a key level of resistance that uh, uh, that also is held. So that gives us that neutral zone out there. That's on the 240-minute chart. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the daily time frame. Let me get that pop up on our screen here because that's larger time frame right so that should have some real meaning for us if we look at the daily time frame where are we at we've got uh well we actually have a slight bullish crossover what i mean by that if you look over here on the left really you can see we have 149 instruments trading above the top of their daily profile 136 below the bottom so that is bullish that is a bullish cross uh, well it maintains the bullish crossover that formed last week and when we take a look at the daily time frame out here, we know that price got back, tested that center of its bullish structured profile. So far as tested the oscillator and change line, all it needs to do is close above 38.41 to then signal that we actually may have an A to B equals CD to the upside that is underway. So in summary here, here's what we can summarize and report back to you with regard to the ES Mini. The monthly time frame, month of June, not been a great month, but what the month of June has done, very much like we said on the uh, whatever time frame it was we were looking at, the 240, just like on the monthly chart, no one at TFNN or anybody that's listening in here would have chosen 3678.25 as a breakout level. Yet that's what it is. Again, sponsored. None other by that TD9 count. And price got back, tested it, and so far rejected. Now look, if next month we see a close below 3678.25 or the month after that, that's going to spell curtains. Those curtains are going to say you can buy those curtains at lower price. Geez, I don't have that turned on just yet where that next figure is. I can tell you, though, where it is just by doing this, that figure would get us down to 2863. It's not what I'm saying is going to take place just yet. 
If we take a look at the weekly chart, we still have that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That remains in effect until price closes out the lows. We've got a buy the D point pattern on the daily time frame. That remains in effect until we close out the lows. The 30 minute chart we've covered there. That's got a nice TD9 count bottom. I'm sorry, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern out here. TD9 count pattern on the 120. Price holding support on that 240 level out there. And even on the five-hour chart, you've got a nice TD nine-count bottom of this form. Price should go target 38.27. If you get above 38.27, then you're looking to move to the 38.94 level. If this is only a counter-trend move, that is where price should find some real resistance, the 38.94 area. So that's kind of an overview of the uh, markets out there. I know we've got some questions that have come in. So let me start getting to uh, those, make sure that we don't get behind on that. And we're going to a break out there. So when we get back from this break, the first thing we're going to look at is, looks like we're going to look at Amazon, AT&T, the SMHs, Boeing, and uh, that's all the requests so far, but we'll take more if we get them. Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, all the U.S. indices still in the red. Dow's off 167. S&P is down 15. Let's go take a look at the amazing one. It is amazing. That is Amazon. The only uh, company I know I can deliver, I can order something. I ordered something yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, and it was like a $10 product. Uh, and I just didn't feel like running out to the store to get it. And uh, and it was delivered between, it was delivered at about 6 o'clock this morning, a $10 item. I've got to turn off, I've got to remember to turn off my uh, my uh, alarm system 
if you know, as you like many of you, as you approach my front door, you know, I've got bells and whistles that go off, and uh, the dogs start barking. Uh, they're electronic dogs, by the way. Those are the easiest I find to take care of out there. But just simply amazing uh, out there. But we want to talk about um, uh, Amazon. That's for HD. And Amazon uh, says, uh, "Hey, Steve, how do Amazon and T AT and T look for longs?" Well, in the case of Amazon. Here's what I can share with you. One, today is a, so on the weekly basis, you have a buy the D point. You can see the A to B equals CD to the downside. It was confirmed with this uh, back here the week of uh, May the 23rd. That was your bull sash candle. So that was your confirmation of that pattern. That's really just led to a consolidation with inside its uh, weekly profile out there. On a daily basis, what has done is much like we took a look at for the sectors inside the S&P 500. What Amazon is doing is testing its May 24 swing point. The top of that swing point is 105.4. The volume on that swing point is 102 million shares. You're done a 58 million so far. Straight line math for a four hour time period, 58 million divided by four times 6.5 gets us to about 94, 95 million shares out there. That says that if Amazon closes above 105.40, what you have out here is a failure to bust out the lows. It can't bust them to the downside. Amazon will try to bust them the upside. Now, HD, you've got this descending trend line that has been established out there. So it's going to have resistance on a bounce up at around the 114-ish area. If you can get through that descending trend line, then you're looking at the next battle being at 117.97. And above that, your battles would be between 123.48 and 126.23. But if you're asking me, do you have a buy signal on Amazon for its daily and its weekly time frame? The answer is yes. In fact, if we look at the monthly time frame, we don't have any kind of a bottom pattern. What price got back to was a swing point that was a key level of a swing point back in September of 2018. And when price finally blew through that level, it blew through it in April of 2020. That's what set up that move to the upside. So price is pulled back, in essence, on a monthly time frame to a key level of support as well. So you've got your signals. What I don't know is how Amazon will deal with those resistance levels above. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the amazing one. Let's go take a look at AT&T. We're going to switch uh, charts uh, for this. This was just simply to make things a little bit more efficient out here. And we take a look at at t it's really the same question. Let's start with the daily time frame. What the daily time frame shows us is what? That's a great question. It shows us a confirmed by the D point pattern. It was confirmed with this bull sash candle that was on June the 17th. What price then did was it was able to close above the top of its bear structured profile on the very next session. That was June 21st. And that set off that move to the upside. Now, what at t should do it should target 2147. But today, HD is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. We know that it can be bars eight, nine, the bar following nine that can identify the top. So I would never ask you to or suggest that you buy AT&T when its daily time frame is already in bar eight. Now, it may not complete this pattern until Tuesday uh, when we get back out here, um, and that would suggest that we should see some type of a pullback inside of ATT. That's at least coming from the daily time frame chart. The weekly, I had a TD9 count top, price pulled back to support. That support level was the bottom of its profile, 1908, that is held. So it does say that it wants higher price, but perhaps the daily time frame is signaling to us that we might get that retrace, we might get that pullback because of the TD9 count pattern that in essence is in play from today. For, well, bar number nine has to complete tomorrow. So let me tell you what has to happen tomorrow. What has to happen, well, and what has to happen today, because this count will go away. First of all, today, price has got to close above 2099. We're only at 2102. If price doesn't close above that, then you're not going to have any kind of a TD9 count pattern out there. doesn't mean that it's not bullish. It means it's not going to form that bearish pattern that Stevie is concerned about. So I want to make sure you have that. That could then perhaps get you to fire away at it. If it does close above that level today, then tomorrow what you need to see is a close above 2078 in order for the nines to actually form out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at AT&T HD. Thanks so much for writing in. By the way, tomorrow we're going to record the show between 8 and 9, so I do hope that each of you can join us early or send in your questions early, and I'll do the best that I uh, can to uh, get to those. Nick writes in, and Nick wants to take a look at the SMHs. And so for the SMH, let's go ahead and get those fired up here. But what I'm also going to do is we're going to switch over. It's going to be easier for me to do this, which is to look at the SMHs from a volume standpoint on the black back background screen. So we'll come back to these white background screens, but we're going to go take a look at that volume matrix. Just earlier in the day was testing a key swing point. Let's go check this, check this out here. Let's go ahead and actually type it in here. So 
let me just move this up to about here. I don't think I've got the volume exactly right, but it's somewhere around 7 million shares or so. Well, the actual volume on the swing point day is 7.1 million shares. So I'll just get rid of this here. And what we can see is that price is tested and so far rejected the low of that swing point. Now, price is still inside that swing point. Let me just get this here. Uh, come on. I'm re and when I say come on, I'm talking to Stevie. I'm talking to my alter ego, Stevie. That didn't even get it right. Yeah, no, that's Apogee. That's not really the line I wanted to draw there. Let me get the correct line out here. Um, and maybe I'm not even going to worry about it. What in the heck is going on? I'm going to put here red horizontal line. It's going to turn out to be purple. I need to change that. But there we go. So now you've got 20106. So prices test that level, Nicholas. The volume there is 2.8 million shares so far today. So 2.8 divided by 4 times 6.5 uh, is going to get us 5 million shares, 5 and change. Well, the uh, we just said that that swing point had volume of 7.1 million shares. You're going to get a test and rejection of the SMHs with lighter volume. Now, what it's got to really do, though, or what I prefer that it does, is get out of that swing point. And in order to get out of the swing point, price has got to close above 207.20. The actual high today has been 207.20. What slapped me upside the head? How could that possibly be? Well, it is what it is. So price has gotten up there, and it's rejected that level. So it puts us in kind of like a, yeah, I don't know. Is it a test rejection of the lower swing point? It is. But until it closes back above the top of that swing point, it is sort of suspect out there. So I hope that that makes sense. Let's go take a look at those white background charts, see if there's any additional information that we can pass on to Nicholas and, of course, pass on to everybody else. So the monthly time frame looks like this is going to be bad news. Bad news meaning that price in the SMH is eventually want to get back to the 126 level. Why? Because if price closed below 216.14, we will have breached or it will have breached that monthly TD9 count breakout level. On a weekly time frame for the SMHs, what do we have? Well, you've got definitely an A to B equals CD pattern. I can see that. You had the bull sash candle from last week. And so the buy the D point pattern remains in effect in the SMHs until price closes below 201. Oh, 06. You got the TD9 count that is still in place on the daily time frame. We've already discussed the test rejection of that swing point. I mentioned that you'd like to see price close above 207.20. To really get on its merry way, you want to see price close above that red oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 208.24. So I hope that helps you out, uh, uh, Nicholas. Uh, thanks so much for writing in. And those were your SMHs. Coda, inside the Tiger's Den, wants to take a look at EFU. So let's go punch that in there and uh, see what what uh, what are you looking for here, Coda? Maybe just an overall view of uh, EFU. Uh, EFU is the ProShares Trust um, MSCI. So this is dealing with emerging markets out there. Add, you want to add to EFU. So we get back to this breakout here. Actually, I think it's going to work out better. Don't you think so, Coda, if I type in the correct ticker symbol? EFU, what you and I know is EFU, why? doesn't exist. But EFU does, and you've got it up on the screen right now. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 126, S&P's down 10. The uh, semis are up about four points right now. We're taking a look at EFU. So both EFU, uh, which was a request from Code Insider of Tiger's Den, and the other one is uh, EEV. Both of those are inverse ETFs, meaning that uh, what Coda is is short the emerging markets out there. And I totally support that decision. And I especially support that decision because, one, you've got all kinds of sovereign debt crises that are going on, defaults on sovereign debt out there. That's going to continue as long as the uh, U.S. dollar index is going to increase, uh, continue to move higher. That just puts pressure on all of that debt that was denominated in U.S. dollars out there. That means in their local currency, they've got to come up with sometimes twice as much as when they entered that uh, transaction out there. So that is a, so being short, uh, fundamentally is a uh, sound decision. Now, if we take a look at what is communicated to us by the charts out here, the monthly chart shows a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. This suggests that over time, price has gone its way up to the 2138 level. The weekly time frame did form a roads momentum indicator top. And that was uh, confirmed last week with that uh, bear, uh, bear sash, yeah, bear sash candle out here. But here's, excuse me, Cody, here's the problem. We had a gap to the upside. That was bullish. They made a bearish candle, the bear sash candle. That's bearish. And that confirmed that road's been to indicator top. Price above the green oscillator and change line. So the real signal, the real message on the weekly time frame, in my opinion, is neutral. Got a top, but price is above uh, resistance. Um, it's above uh, uh, its green oscillator and change line. So you really now it will give you the real bullish message when price can take out the recent high. And that high is up at the 1466 level. But I say you're neutral on the uh, uh, weekly time frame. The daily time frame looks like Kelter Skelter out here. So the daily time frame had a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. It confirmed, I'm just going to pull this back, make it easier for everybody to see. It confirmed when we had this gap to the downside on June 21st out there. But we've got so many currency conversions that is going on with inside this ETF out there. You know, it makes it hard to really know whether the signal that I'm seeing here, Coda, is a real signal. Is it a currency signal? Is it something else out there? But either way... What uh, has transpired is we do have a profile that price is trading within. So that helps us. And right now, you just have a consolidation with inside that profile. And if price can close above 1456, odds favor that you're on your merry way. So if you're looking to add to this position, what you know at least now is one potential area to add is on a pullback to 1344. Don't know that we're going to get that, but it's a possibility. Um, or you can add to it as price uh, uh, breaks above those resistance levels. Let's see if we have the same type of signals when we go over to EEV out here. 
So let's punch that in. This should take just about 10 seconds out here. They may have the exact same patterns. I don't know, but we're going to find out real quickly out here. So, yeah, they have similar patterns. You've got a nice TD9 count, a road's to indicator bottom on the monthly time frame. This suggests that over time, price wants to make a move to 44.20. It's only priced at 23 bucks. The weekly has a confirmed TD9 count top as well as a wave number seven top out there that took price back to support. That was the bottom of its so weekly profile in the 1988 level. Didn't get all the way down there, but it got pretty darn close. On the daily time frame, again, back to this kind of helter-skelter view but what we do know is price is above the top of its daily profile above its green oscillator and change line so that says and i don't see a top in place on the daily time frame obviously we've got it on the weekly but the daily says yeah you could most certainly go ahead and add here and on the weekly basis price is above that green oscillator and change line so it's not like it's uh, uh uberly bullish out there so i hope that helps you out with regard to both eeb and efu Let's go take a look at the uh, request out here from Michael P. Michael P. writes in and he says, I've got puts on coin. So let's get that uh, started up here. That, that is uh, Coinbase. And uh, give me a second. We'll, we'll read the rest of his question, which goes like this. I've got the puts on coin now in the money. I think it breaks, uh, I think it breaks the low of 40.83. How does it look to you? Okay, so. The monthly chart, not enough information for us on my charts to really pay attention to, uh, information-wise. On the weekly time frame chart, price has, it formed, it's got a TD9 count bottom. No, I take that back. It does not have any kind of a bottom on the weekly time frame. When price is done so far, it's rejected the bottom of its weekly bullish structure, weekly profile, um, and that says suggest lower price. And on the daily time frame, well, the daily time frame, see, I don't, here's, let me see if I can do this. I know I can do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna screw around with it. So here's what we've got. You've got a uh, confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom on June 13th, and that low was pierced today, but price is trading above it. And right now you've got a hammer candle that sets up another roads momentum indicator signal. So. You're trying to get this down to 4083, and 4083 is at the low so far. That is, yeah, that is the low of the, uh, that's the low that this has traded to, 40.83. So the question is, is Coinbase going to take that level out? You know, let's do this. Let's go switch charts. And so I want you to do this while I'm doing this as well. I'm just going to take a look at today's volume, Mike, and just see if there's some kind of signal there. And it's on the daily time frame. So let's expand out this chart. Let's pull this back. And uh, so the swing point that you're looking for this to take out is a swing point from May the 12th out there. And so price is trading with inside that swing point as we speak. Hasn't tested it. But the volume on that trading day was 58 million shares. And today you're at 9.7 million shares. Now, what's not shown on the black background charts are the Roseman to indicator bottom signals out here. So this looks to me like it's not going to bust it out today. It's not going to bust it out tomorrow. Price is going to rise. It's going to move up into that descending trend line. Maybe that's at about the uh, 54 40 ish area. Maybe it's 54 um, 51.62 to 54 or so. Uh, but you, you're going to have a valid bottom. And if price can take out 60.30, that's the top of that uh, swing point, and it does that with lighter volume. You know, then you want to be out of there. So I don't have, I don't have significant reasons to tell you to jettison the position, um, but it does look like it's really trying to hold that low. The low I'm referring to is not the low from the swing point you're looking at, but the June 13th low. Now that had volume out there of 28 million shares. Um, that is being tested today with 9.7 million shares. So, I mean, that is another swing point out there, and that seems to be holding. So, does it go after 4083? Maybe it does, but right now it looks like this wants to, Coinbase, wants to actually trade higher. Perhaps not by a lot, which would be a reason to uh, hold on to your position and let it prove itself to you. So, I hope that that helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for writing in. I don't believe I have any other questions inside the Tiger's Den, but if there was something that somebody at the Tiger's Den wanted me to take a look at, well, CKB says, Steve, I don't know. Did you cover gold? I did not. 
So let's go do that. And which charts are we on? We're on the black charts. So let's go stick with the black background charts. We've got a few seconds here. And then we could take a look at gold in more detail. Well, the first thing we want to take a look at gold is how is gold trading in all of the major currencies out there? Right now, as we take a look at it, it's down in terms of dollars, down in terms of euros, down in terms of yen, and it's trading down in terms of pounds out there. So CKP, that's not exactly what gold wants to, what you want to see in gold, if you're long gold, if you're short gold, most certainly. But we get back to this breakout here, we're going to go take a look at gold, we'll take a look at it for some multiple time frames out there, and see what it is that we can find. Steve Rhodes with TFN. we'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So we had a request to take a look at the gold. Not everybody has access to the gold contract, so I've just switched over to the GLD. So we can take a look at it. I think the monthly uh, time frame chart really kind of says it all at this stage here. Price is traded between trend line support and trend line resistance with price now getting back to the trend line support level. Price is below uh, the weekly profile level, but uh, that's really going to be dependent upon tomorrow, not today's activity. We can see that price is trading into trend line support levels on the daily time frame. Also tra trading into a swing point for May 13th. Now that swing point did volume of 13 million shares. Right now we're at 
Mathematically, that turns out to about 7.5 million shares by day's end. So price is pushing lower into that swing point on lighter volume. And I hope that helps you out. The last question uh, is to take a look at Lightspeed Crude. This is for Lorna inside the Tiger's Den as well. So let's pull up those charts out here. We take a look at Lightspeed Crude. We're in the August contract. The daily time frame, price is pulled back to its breakout level of 105.94. If that level holds, um, then support will have held. If that level fails, you can expect or anticipate a move down to 103.47. That's the bottom of its daily profile. The five-hour chart out here has got wave number seven. That's letter G. That's courtesy of a portion of the Chapman wave. That does suggest that price should go target 104.10. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, uh, you do have a buy the D point pattern that form with this bullish hammer candle at 12 noon. Now, typically the best place to buy a hammer candle is towards the center or the bottom. Usually it's best to do that on bars three through seven. We're only in bar one following that hammer candle out there. Um, so what is that telling us? I'm not sure. Right now it's telling us you've got a confirmed bottom on a 120 minute time frame. The 60 minute time frame out here, you've got a confirmed by the D point pattern that uh, formed with that piercing candle. But what price has been unable to do, Lorna, is take out that red oscillator and change on. So your real significant resistance level inside of White Street Crew for the August contract is about 107 to 70. Folks, thanks so much for joining me here. Stay tuned, you've got two more great hours left. Don't forget, join me tomorrow, eight o'clock sharp. Well, really it's about 806, 807. We uh, report the show. Uh, if we don't uh, speak to you before then, have a fantastic slide for it.